Welcome friends of sport, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Alicia and I am 13 years old from Thailand. Thank you for joining us at the United Through Sports World Virtual Youth Festival 2020 Educational Panel. Today we will discuss Millennials for the Future. For today's session, please join me in welcoming Mickey Matheson from Japan, Kira Byland from the UK and Mitch Gleason from Australia. Before we meet our panelists, I would like to introduce a gentleman who is a household name in the Kingdom of Thailand, Jutinan Piron Pakti, also known as Kun Nik, the President of the Thai Paralympic Committee. Sawadee Krab. On behalf of the National Paralympic Committee of Thailand, it is my great pleasure to appear in front of you and all the amazing speakers from the world of sport. Let me first congratulate all the participating youth representing over 80 organizations. The opening ceremony was a celebration of one spirit, one heart. To all the performers from around the world and Kingdom of Thailand, I applaud your performances. The Educational Forum has been covering and will continue to touch upon topics from fair play, the IPC workshop on inclusion, the IOC youth leaders, equality, Olympic truth, safeguarding youth, and the topic today is millennials for the future. We all remember the words of the 32nd president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, who said, we cannot always build the future for our youth but we can build our youth for the future. We must ensure that sports programs are developed for all abilities. We're living in an ever-changing times. I believe that through sports, important values of inclusion, equality, and non-discrimination, we can make tomorrow's future brighter by building a healthier society, both minds and bodies. We also must have shared goals of building youth engagement with the understanding that there is new youth appeal for sports. Who would have thought years ago that we would see in the upcoming Tokyo Olympics sports such as skateboarding, surfing, or climbing as urban sports? We need to work for this emerging new culture of youth sports and we must ensure that as members of the Olympic movement that we engage our youth, work for our youth, and in fact, it is our responsibility to promote a sustainable future for our world. In order to plan for this new culture, youth must be the center of our work. I'm looking forward to this important panel with athletes and representatives of the IPC Special Olympics, and the Olympic movement in general. Thank you for allowing me to open this panel. For the warm introduction to this panel, now I would like to welcome the first panelist, Miss Mickey Matheson. Miss Matheson, you are a legend in the Paralympic movement off and on the field of play as a three-time Paralympic gold medalist for ice sled speed racing. Respect to you from us. You are also an IPC Education Committee member. How can sport continue to encourage a positive approach to physical and mental health for the millennials? So we are living in the digital era and there has been increased diversity in the way we interact with sports that wasn't available when I was a kid. The pandemic speeds up the digital transformation in many aspects of our lives even further in both positive and the negative side surfaced. What brings true value to our lives are the real life experiences, not impersonal data. So um, I want to emphasize the importance of putting knowledge into hands-on experience. Um, in my experience that the physical effort and emotional demands of competing in sports you develop a laser-like focus 
which has helped me to clear my mind, organize my thoughts, and uh, release the uh, mental stress of daily life. The skills that I developed through the participating in sports are transferable in life, uh, relevance to uh, almost any age group. And um, they are helping me in both my personal and professional life. The sports has always and continue to bring positive physical benefits and uh, um, refreshed mental health and has the um, added value of having fun, uh, developing strong immune system, a great friendship and resilience and so many different great things. Miss Matheson, we know you play a vital role in educating youth and in particular, your work with the IPC program that was created in 2017 called I'm Possible. What is the objective of the program and what value does this program bring to the youth? I thank you for the question. The first of all, I would like you to write uh, the word impossible in your head and added an apostrophe between I and M. The words turn into I'm possible. So basically a small thing like an apostrophe can turn seemingly impossible into I'm possible. I'm possible is the name of the uh, International Paralympic Committee's education program. So we Paralympians see the uh, difficulties as opportunities and continue to redefine what is possible. So we would like to inspire and excite young people around the world to uh, make you believe that you too have the power to achieve unthinkable in your lives. So that's one of the key messages that uh, we would like to spread through this program. The second aim is to challenge people's perceptions and attitude towards people with disabilities. Paralympians are creating a systemic shift in attitude towards people with disabilities. So more and more people can uh, recognize what is able not the label of the people with disability. The last aim is to drive social inclusion through the Paralympic Games itself. I'm Possible is using the power of the Paralympics and education to cultivate an inclusive mindset. The Paralympic movement is a movement um, that aims to create social change for the betterment of the society by bringing awareness of the uh, people of the world through the values and significance of Paralympic sports. The thriving adversity, the like thriving through adversity, is not new to the Paralympic family, yet uh, this unprecedented time has brought us whole new challenges. The benefit of this program is to help young people uh, grow with an inclusive mindset and increase the uh, resilience in the stressful situation. So I'm Possible is a powerful program. So hopefully you can encounter this program really soon. So thank you so much for the questions. Thank you for sharing details about the initiative and all the values it brings to all youth. Now I would like to introduce the wonderful Miss Kira Byland. Kira, or can we call you KB? You compete internationally in cycling and regionally in swimming. You are also a Special Olympics coach. You won three gold medals in the 2015 at the Special Olympics Games in Los Angeles. That's really impressive. But aside from being an athlete, you are also a leader and a great ambassador for the Special Olympics. What can millennials do to help create more inclusive communities? Yes, you can call me KB. Most people do when they get to know me. That is such a good question. So what would I say to everyone out there? Kindness does matter. It doesn't have to cost anything, but it goes a long way to help create inclusive communities. For people to understand what an intellectual disability is, it's better done at an early age for it to become the norm. At primary school, I would randomly break out into song. I think that's why I wasn't able to keep friends, because I was weird. But what could have happened 
is, oh, it's just Kira cheering us up, rather than be quiet and get on with your work. What can help is social media. How many people with an intellectual disability do you see regularly present on TV, on the radio, in magazines, being a sports commentator, being in films, the list could go on. So giving those kinds of opportunities for people like me is a great way to move forward having an inclusive communities. I love sports. I'm a coach. I'm good at it. If I was mainstream or a power Olympian, I'd get the chance to become a sports commentator on TV, radio, podcast, raising the profile. But yet, as a Special Olympian, none of our sporting events is on TV in my country for me to even commentate on. So my question is, what's next for me and every other athlete with intellectual disability? What's the next move? So to summarise, help us get on regular social and media platforms, in magazines and on TV, but not just for the, oh bless, or the pity of stories, but for us to show other people like me with intellectual disability what they can do. I might have limitations, but I can be a part of an inclusive local community and society if people know that I exist. KB, you made some really valuable points. Thank you for sharing your perspective with us. The pandemic has forced coaches and instructors to maintain contact with athletes with training and practices by video conferences. Is there any initiative or programs that organizations can use and athletes can get involved with towards better teaching and practice for distance sports? I started as a cyclist and a swimmer. That wasn't easy as it sounded, but that's another story. I love these sports and good at them. I made friends and I felt valued. So the next step was to become a coach. And that really wasn't as easy as it sounded. There was limited adaptation opportunities for the online learning. For example, little or no audio options. It was all black text and I read purple. Asking me to do 112 hours online by myself really wasn't realistic. I've learned that coaching isn't just about physically teaching or the physical fitness. It's about the mental and the emotional support you give as a coach. You can't be your best if you don't have the mental and emotional support. In Special Olympics, we are striving to do that. Since lockdown in March, we offered Motivational Mondays, so I posted positive quotes through social media for 100 days. As we're back in a national lockdown, I will be posting some new ones. Through to Wellness Wednesdays, I co-delivered a Unified Strong Mind session. We started with a four week block to teach the basics of strong minds. And there on YouTube, feel free to have a look. And now we have a catch up and a brew. Now a brew is a hot drink for where I'm from. And now SOGB has started walking Wednesdays through Strava. So Fitness Fridays, where I designed and delivered head to toe fitness recordings with help of ESBM. These recordings are also on YouTube. Feel free to have a look. I co-delivered with another athlete called Shauna, a fun Zumba session, which I love doing. With my Unified Cycling Club, I deliver Zoom cycle training. So we have five coaches and we deliver three box sessions twice a week. The session starts with a 20 minute warm up, then an hour and a half, main physical activity and then a cool down. I feel valued as a qualified coach. I'm equal and we learn from each other so it's a win-win. In my local region we have a number of clubs that run weekly Zoom sessions. 
they offer weekly challenges and when a challenge is completed, the athletes get a certificate of achievement. Many of our athletes miss the competition and the recognition of their hard work, which is what we train for. In SOGB, we're not lucky enough to get government funding. So we rely on fundraising to ensure that we have a national programme. It seems a constant battle to fundraise, especially during the pandemic, especially when all events have been cancelled. As a board member, I have been trying to do my bit, sending short recordings saying thank you to our sponsors, through to delivering strong mind sessions to the staff team which have proved very popular, to having my opinions heard about healthy recipes, which are now online through Kerry Foods. They say you can't have your cake and eat it, but actually you can with the easy peasy chocolate mousse. I think it shows the sponsors how much they are needed and their continued support helps people like me. Thank you, Kira. It's good to know there are options out there for all of us. Our next panellist is joining us from the sunny Gold Coast. He is the Australian captain of the Gold Coast Titans Physical Disability Rugby League team. Do we have any Titans fans with us today? Mr. Gleeson, you play physical disability rugby and in the past had been told by doctors at various times in your life that you wouldn't be able to play any sport. Tell us how your community focus is making a difference for the lives of so many. Um, in my opinion, um, it's making massive changes in guys with disabilities. Um, like normally b before, we, we didn't have a chance to play sports or we sort of got left out in sports where we just felt like we weren't comfortable enough to, um, part like, to participate in that sport. But now having um, a group of guys with varying disabilities, um, you feel more comfortable and, and inviting to actually come down and, and, and test out your skills. Honestly, Mr. Gleeson, I've seen your social media and you really bring joy and smiles to so many faces and a sense of inclusion. As someone who is a role model and ambassador, what more do you think can be done towards more inclusion and non-discrimination in sport, taking the Titans as an example? Um, I'd love to see someone with a disability showing kids and young, young men that they can do it by having a disability. So. You normally have a male and a female showing the men and the women that they can do it, but having a bloke with a disability showing a kid that he can do it will just change lives massively. But I know from experience down here, I've had a couple of guys come down here thinking they couldn't do it, but the fact that I could show them that they could do it and I've pushed them into it, mate, they can do it. You just got to show them they, that they can do it. I sincerely hope your words echo beyond this panel and encourage adults to think about us millennials and what we need to do in order to have opportunities and a place in society, no matter where we come from or our abilities. Dear friends, today this panel touched on the needs of millennials such as myself towards the future. Thank you to Ms. Matheson, Kira and Mr. Gleason, and our scene setter, Jotinan Pirompakti. May we all continue to be united through sports with one spirit and one heart.